50 TV channels to watch that takes their mind off of it. They're worrying about getting just from paycheck to paycheck to feed their family. So the government's manipulated it to a point that they're controlling it already. That's it. Now the taxes are so high. They're saying, turn your guns in and we'll say forget your taxes. And the other thing that was surprising to me is, you know, they've got CERN from what I heard up and going. Yep. And the last blood and moon is in September. And I heard one of the scientists talking and she said, well, it would be about a year before they could find out anything or it could be in September. So I'm, I'm actually wondering if we even have to worry about the election, the next election. Well, we know something. the elites are obsessed with astrology and astrophysics, uh, which grew out of astrology. And I mean, whether it's real or not, they're obsessed with it. And I've never heard of so many lunar eclipses. I mean, it seems like every week I, it's, I wake up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom, look out the window, there's some giant red moon out the window. I mean, I've never seen anything like it in my life. It's getting crazy. So we'll follow all that. God bless you. Good to hear from you, Tom. Jason in New York, thanks for holding here on the air. Hi, Alex. I was wondering, um, was there ever a bulletin or a recall or any type of formal explanation given by Mercedes-Benz for Michael Hastings' assassination? Nope. I mean, he said, I'm being chased by a special federal unit. I'm running for my life, told friends and family. They blew his car up. And then we, I mean, I know folks, Biggs was really good friends when they went to the funeral. The wife was all freaked out. I'm going to do something about it. I'm going to stop him. And then she goes on TV and says, his car was on fire. He's loving. I love the government. Uh, and, of course, she worked for the National Security Council as one of only two assistants in the actual council rooms. And, folks, the National Security Council runs the show. It is the top of the pyramid. And General Jones, when he ran it, said, I take my daily orders from Henry Kissinger. So, I mean, his I'm not going to say, I mean, clearly Hastings was a, some type of commando, and, and his wife is a spook as well, if you ask me. What do you think? Well, I do. I, I think it's an atrocity what happened to him and others like him, like Gary Webb and Aaron Schwartz. But why is it, if I owned a Mercedes-Benz, I'd like to know, uh, well, hey, this, this car just happens to explode and fly down the street. Well, it's a I flying mean, carpet. I, no, I agree. So, uh, exactly. You know, we never heard why that car, I mean, I mean, if a Chevy blew up like that, it'd be a recall. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, look at the Pintos in the 70s. So, you know, like I said, if I owned a Benz, I'd really want to know. I'd be like, you know what? I want to get rid of this car now, ASAP. So Benz and all these other companies like GE is with the Mark reactors in Fukushima, they're all complicit in this fascist, in this fascist operation. I agree with you. I, I, I apologize to Rod and Mary. If you want to call back tomorrow and tell John, hey, I was left on hold the other day. Whenever you can get back in, well, you'll go to the head of the line. Uh, we're out of time. Thanks for putting up with me, folks. I'm just a watchman on the wall screaming bloody murder. Don't claim I get it all right or have all the answers, but we all know things are getting crazy. So you... Don't it be perfect either. Just ring the alarm, warn people, shake the public out of their trance. Don't get too mad at them. These are victims of mind control. Feel sorry for them. Pray for them. Sort of legal basis. We worried about international legal basis, but nobody worried about the fundamental constitutional uh, legal basis that this Congress has over war. We were not asked uh, stunningly in, in direct violation of the War Powers Act whether or not you believe it's Constitution. It certainly didn't comply with it. We spent our time worrying about the UN, the Arab League, NATO, and too little time, in my opinion, worrying about the elected representatives of the United States. Do you think that you can act without Congress uh, to and initiate a no-fly zone in Syria without congressional approval? You know, again, uh, our, our goal would be to, uh, to seek international permission, and uh, we would we would come to the Congress uh, and inform you uh, and determine uh, how best to approach this, uh, whether or not we would uh, want to get uh, permission from the Congress. Uh, I think those are issues we would have to discuss as we decide what to do here. Well, I'm almost breathless about that because what I heard you say is we're going to seek international approval and they will come and tell the Congress what we might do, and we might seek congressional approval. No, well, I want to just say to you, that's a big dish. Wouldn't you agree uh, you've served in the Congress? Yeah. Wouldn't you agree that that uh, would be pretty breathtaking to the average American? So would you like to clarify that? But I've, uh, I, I, you know, we, I've also uh, served uh, with Republican presidents and Democratic presidents who have always reserved the right 
to defend this country if necessary. But you, before we do this, you would seek permission of the international authorities. If we're, work, if we're working with an international coalition and we're working with NATO, uh, we would uh, want to be able to uh, get uh, appropriate permissions in order to be able to, to do that. That's, that's something that you know, all of these countries would want to have some kind of legal basis on which to act. What legal basis are you looking for? What, what entity? Well, I, obviously, the U, if, if NATO made the decision to go in, that would be one. Uh, if, uh, if, we, if we developed a, an international coalition beyond NATO, uh, then obviously some kind of UN security resolution would so be an, the basis on for a that. Coalition of, so you're saying NATO would give you a legal basis and uh, um, an ad hoc coalition of nations would provide a legal basis? If we, if, we, if we were able to put together a coalition uh, and uh, were able to uh, move together, then obviously we would seek whatever legal basis we would need in order to make that uh, uh, justified. I mean, you, you, you know, we, we can't just pull them all together uh, in a uh, combat operation without getting the, uh, the legal basis on which to act. Well, who are you asking for the legal basis from? If it's uh, obviously if the UN passed a security resolution as it did in Libya, we would do that. Uh, if uh, if NATO came together as we did in Bosnia, uh, we would rely on that. So you know we we have options here uh, if we want to build uh, the kind of international approach to dealing with the situation. Well, I'm for all for having an in international support, but I I'm really baffled by the idea. That, that somehow an international assembly provides a legal basis for the United States military to be deployed in combat. I don't believe it's close to being correct. They, have, they can provide no legal authority. The only legal authority that's required to deploy the United States military is uh, the Congress and the President and the law and the Constitution. Let, let me just for the record be clear again, Senator, so there's no misunderstanding. When it comes to the national defense of this country, Thank you President of the United much, States um, Richard, has the authority and I under the Constitution to, be here in these new to act to defend this country, um, and we will. I have been often uh, to, uh, uh, I guess, the mothership in New York City, operation where we're uh, but it's to good to have an outpost of, of the council right here down the street from the State Department. Uh, uh, we get a lot of advice from the council, so this will mean I won't have as far to go to uh, be told uh, what we should be doing and uh, how uh, we should uh, think about the future.